Hi, I'm Steve Barlow, and today I'm in a region of the country biologists call the Southeast Coastal Plain. Now, this area was once covered with a huge longleaf pine forest, but since the European expansion it's been mostly decimated, and less than 5% of it remains today. So come on, let's take a look around. Wow, check this out. Now this is one of the most important wildlife species found in this habitat. This is a gopher tortoise, and it's an ancient animal. Tortoises have changed very little over the last 200 million years, so it's like I'm holding a dinosaur right here. This is a gorgeous animal. Look at, look at these, I want you to notice these front legs. They're made just like big shovels, spades, and they're for digging. This girl can dig like no other. In fact, if she was down in the dirt pulling with those legs, I couldn't even hold her. Now we know this is a female because she has a flat bottom shell or plastron. The males tend to have a concave inward curving shell, and that's for one purpose, mounting on top of the female for reproduction. As you can imagine, reproduction between tortoises can be a tricky endeavor. Now this is a beautiful, beautiful animal, and she's probably 50 years old. They can live to be 100 years. And this is what biologists call a keystone species because so many other animals depend upon this gopher tortoise and what she does in this community. Now one other thing I want you to notice is where she has to eat. Now her head is obviously right here, and her feeding zone is very narrow. And so she's, a, she's an herbivore. She has to eat grasses and succulent plants. So she needs a good supply of plant growth right at the forest floor in that tortoise feeding zone. Now historically, this area of succulent plant growth at the forest floor was maintained by naturally occurring wildfires. But since the European expansion, we've mostly eliminated wildfires from this habitat, and that allows plants to grow past the tortoise feeding zone, and it shades out the succulent plants that she needs to survive. So how does something as slow as a tortoise escape wildfires and roaming biologists? Well, let's turn her loose and we'll find out. Okay, go. Go. She, she'll go in just a second. Go, go. go. Hello, hello. <laughs> go, girl, go. Hey, come on. Let's go see where she went. Wow, come check this out. Now that's one sweet hole. This is her palace. This is the tortoise's burrow. And it can extend out 50 feet under the forest floor. And this is where she goes to escape wildfires and roaming biologists. But it's not just for her. Almost 300 other animal species use these burrows. So how do we manage these communities for species like the gopher tortoise. Well, come on, there's one more thing I wanna show you. Now this lowly tuft of grass is called wire grass, and biologists are working to restore it and bring it back into these communities. This grass is here for one purpose, and one purpose only, to burn, baby, burn. This stuff loves fire, and this plant will sit here patiently waiting for years for a lightning strike to create a spark. And then poof, this stuff takes off like gasoline, burning across this entire habitat and keeping that plant growth in check and down at our gopher feeding zone. Now my father and his father worked feverishly to remove this plant from these habitats as it had little value for their livestock. Now I'm working just as hard to bring it back. 